I've already said several times that the inductor and the capacitor are two sides of the same coin, so since we did quite a bit of work on RC circuit, I don't think you'd be so surprised that we're now dealing with RL circuit, which is a combination of resistors and inductors. So there's also a very similar kind of charge up process where we used to charge up a capacitor by building up charges across the two plates and storing that energy in electric fields. For inductor, likewise, we quote unquote charge up, or I guess the word that we use more often is energize the inductor by having current run through it and we store the energy in the magnetic field. And hopefully through this example, we can see how there are certain things that are similar to the RC circuit. And then there's a few, you know, details changes that applies here. So again, the governing equation for my inductor, if we're asking about the potential drop based on Faraday's law, we get this governing equation, which again, I just rewrite this as the voltage drop across my inductor instead of using EMF. Let's consider the case when this is still open. So we don't care about this back part. I'm just gonna cover it as much as I can. So here we have a fairly simple circuit with a voltage source, one single resistor, one single inductor, and they are in series like that. At the start, when you say we first connected, the moment you connect that battery and complete that circuit, we're basically trying to change the source voltage from zero to whatever this value is. And you might imagine because of this resistance here, the governing equation is V equals IR. So if you increase the voltage by a lot, you're gonna try and increase the current as well. But we have an inductor in series as well, which shares some of that voltage. And how much voltage does it share? It shares as much as the change in the current. If we try to change the current, the inductor will resist that change because it's going to create a back EMF that is proportional to your change in current. Since this is potentially a huge change, a very sudden change from off to on, your inductor will create basically at the beginning, it will basically give a potential drop of as large as possible, which is basically roughly all of the voltage supplied by your voltage source. So as a result, whatever is left over for the resistor is near zero, and so the current starts out near zero. But over time, the current will now increase slowly until it settles at a certain level. So after a long time, your current will eventually steady off itself, meaning that your change in current the IDT approaches zero, so therefore you're no longer inducing a back EMF. And in that sense, the inductor after a long time acts like a wire, very roughly speaking, so that you can work out your current to be four amps. And that's gonna be important for the next part of the question. So to summarize, when you're energizing a inductor, at the very beginning, when it's fully discharged, it's going to dictate and say that the current is equal to zero through that particular part branch of the circuit. If it's just a simple single loop, then you know that the current through the entire circuit is zero. And then as you build up your current and, and the changes in current settles over time, your delta V in the inductor slowly becomes zero and you act like a wire which in a sense, it's kind of like the flip side of your capacitor. So that's the case for energizing or quote unquote charging your inductor. And in terms of a function, again, solving using differential equation, which we're not gonna go through in detail, is it also has a similar charging curve with the e to the something divided by a time constant. In this case though, the time constant is not r times c, is L over R, because you would imagine the bigger your inductance, the longer it will take to charge up, but the bigger your resistance, the more quickly you settle on to the current that you settle on. So that's why it's over R and not times R. So keep that whenever we have to do RL circuit with where 
energizing the inductor. But that's not what this question is about. This question is about we have this after a long time and then we break the switch so then this whole circuit is gone and then we connect that switch so that it can quote unquote discharge through my resistor. So just like for the capacitor case when we're discharging although that's not really the right word because we're not moving charges we're energizing and de-energizing the magnetic field. Remember how we talked about that my inductor resist change in current? So if we remove the source voltage the current you might think would drop to zero and this sudden change cannot happen in the face of an inductor. So what the inductor does, the inductor tries to maintain a certain current, whatever current that it had before the switches happen. Similar to how a capacitor would try to maintain the voltage. So for part A, immediately after the switch is closed, it's going to want to maintain the current that it had just before the switch got switched. And we worked that out before I raised it was 4 amps because just on this part of the circuit after a long time this acts like a wire so we know that the current through here is 20 volts divided by 5 ohm. So it tries to maintain that at the very very beginning. So this might be something you're not quite used to because for the capacitor you can say oh it acts like a battery which is a voltage source. But in this case this doesn't act like a voltage source this acts like a current source. It provides a certain amount of current in my circuit. So what's going to happen to this current? It's going to start out high but then it's going to slowly droop down and discharge through the resistor until a very long time later it goes to nothing. And you get that as a function. Again the time constant is given by L over R so then we can basically plug numbers in for the next part because tau is L over R which is 4 times 10 to the minus 3 Henry's divided by 5 ohms which will get you seconds. You can check that for yourself. So then they're asking what is the current at a very long time later. My I naught is my starting so that's 4 amps. After 4 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds so we divide by the time constant. So the calculator gets you 2.4 amps. And then for part C to get the voltage across the resistor here so we stick a voltmeter here like that. Well the voltage across a resistor is just simply I times R so that's really simple. We already know my current to be 2.426 amps and multiply by 5 ohms so we get 12 volts. And then for the voltage across the inductor we can of course apply this thing and derive etc etc. But you can also see that these two points across my resistor is the same as those two points. You can say that this is a loop so that whatever change in voltage across here delta V must have the same magnitude as the change in voltage across there. Because through a loop the change in voltage must sum to zero. They might have opposite signs but they're going to be both 12 volts then. So keep these kind of expression in mind when you look at energizing versus de-energizing inductors in RL circuits.